What's happening, everybody? Super pumped to talk about our topic today. So we're going to talk about how to reduce and lower your turnover rate with your movers in your business. So right off the bat, we're, we're just going to jump right in. So, you know, the number one reason why people leave is because they don't feel recognized and appreciated. You know, whether you think that that's real or not, it's real. Um, across the board, no matter what industry, no matter what type of job it is, people leave because they don't feel valued. You know, it's one of the most important things to do in your business, and it's generally the thing that gets forgotten about is recognizing people. And you have to do things genuinely. So, like, if you if you just do something to do it, just to check it off the box, it doesn't count. And And your people, you know, whether – no matter how smart or – not smart you think they are they're they're gonna pick up on it so as far as turnover i am a big believer in systematizing as much of the business as you can so if if i were a moving business owner in today's market what i would be doing is i would be getting with you know my my couple office people i might have maybe got an ops manager office office administrator right couple people and I would be focused on how we get people started. So generally, one of the big problems that moving companies have, they don't start people off on the right foot. So they kind of just, they get the guy in because they need a person. And so they just throw them right on to jobs. Maybe you do a half day training at your warehouse or whatnot, but generally it's pretty quick. And there's not a lot of conversation around what are the expectations, right, overall. What are their career aspirations? What's the opportunity to move up? There's not enough of that conversation. And there's not enough talk about what your values, morals, and ethics are as a company, right? It's, it's let's teach them the technical stuff and then get them out there, right? Because if, if they're not going out on jobs, they're not making us money. And while that's true, partly, if we don't do enough of the preparation work, then we're just setting a person up for... For failure because they're going to go work they're not going to feel valued they're not going to understand why they don't they're not going to understand the big picture so that's the other you know thing that is going to help your turnover is ex being able to articulate the big picture the vision what is the the purpose of why we were doing this if if the these guys think i mean this is what they think is they think that you're just running off with with bags of money and you know, that's not true. I mean, the, there's some, there is some good profit in this business, but I mean, it's, the margins are not crazy and it's a lot of work and there's a lot of work that they don't see. So when you're trying to lower your turnover rate, you need to get people started really well. You know, it's going to take time. Like if you're, if you have a business that's, that you don't have a bunch of managers, it's, you know, it's kind of you and maybe you got an office person, then a lot of this is going to fall on your plate. But if you don't make a change, then you can't expect a change. So if you're having terrible turnover and you're constantly having to like reestablish a team every season, well, if you've gone done that for five years in a row, if you keep doing the same thing, that's insanity. Insanity is thinking you can do the same thing over and over and expect a change. You're gonna have to do something different. My advice is re-systematize how you get people started. And all that starts at when you interview them and then when you give them the offer and then their onboarding and then training and then all these little critical conversations. You don't have someone hired until they've been there for 90 days because the truth is that when you hire them, you know, their first week, they're fragile, meaning one bad day and, and they might just not show up anymore. And you may say, well, that's not the guy I want. You can think like that all day, but... There's lots of folks in the marketplace that are like that. And so you can either A, play the game to win, or B, you can play the game to be right. And what that means is that, yeah, there's some people in the marketplace today that, no, I don't agree with their 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 values and their thoughts and how their work ethic is. I'm not saying I agree with it, but I have the, whatever is out in the marketplace is what I have to play the game with. And I'm going to win. So if I need to spend a little more time in the beginning with somebody, building the relationship, casting the vision, showing how they fit, their vision fits into our vision, then that's what you got to do. Um, instead of looking at how many guys you have 
total on your roster. My advice would be to like you should everybody should learn how to draw their org chart. Okay, your organization chart. You need to learn how to do this. Um, your org chart, again, is just all the people in your business, their role, how they fit into the business. And what I like to do is like, like have a whiteboard and just draw circles and put people's initials. So like for Winston Davis, I just put WD. What you can then do is like you're trying to draw dark circles. A dark circle represents a core person. And so a core person might be, yeah, it could be all your crew lead drivers. Um, but you could have a like a helper who's not a driver, but they're a core person. They've been there for a certain amount of time and they're very consistent. They're accountable. They respond well and you can count on them. And so I'm drawing a dark circle around that person on my org chart and I am investing time in those people. If you've got people that they only work 10 or 15 or 20 hours a week and they're sometimes kind of flaky, they're not always super accountable, like Spend time with those people, train those people, but spend most of your time on core people and you're, you should look at your, your business and think, okay, how many core movers and drivers do I have? Core should be like, it should be like a bat, like a battle scar, right? Like, Hey, we've got a core person and, and you could even like go in depth and like make some acronym off of that thing. Like C O R E like core, you could, you know, have values based off of those things, but like it should be a, a, a badge of honor to be a core person. And if somebody is a part of the core group, it means that they are, they're a performer. They're dependable, they're accountable. And so if I have eight core people, maybe I have 20 or 25 people total in my, on my moving staff, but maybe I have like eight or nine core people. I'm not trying to grow from 20 to 40 people. I'm trying to grow my core number of people from eight to 12 or eight to 10. And the more core people, the more people that you can draw a dark circle around that are dependable, those are the people that matter from an investment standpoint. All people matter in your business, okay? All people matter. But I'm going to spend the most time with the core people and you need them to get on board with your vision. You need them to buy in and then what you'll find is that it'll kind of, it, it'll multiply. So core people generally bring other core people and they'll also attract and magnetize to the people around them. So, you know, if you're having people come and go, come and go, come and go, it means that your business is kind of fractioned. Um, the relationships aren't there. People tend to stay at a job where they like the people they work with. You know, I did a YouTube video on this called Emotional Ties. And so the more of a relationship you have with people, the harder it is for them to leave, right? So instead of making everything about how much you're paying them or how many hours they get, yes, those things are important. But if you can be really good with these other things, which don't cost you any money, but it costs you a little bit of time, draw out a roadmap of opportunity at your company. So like draw out and then, you know, make it look nice. You use Canva or something, get a, a graphical design of this, but you know, draw out like all the different routes somebody could go as far as promotions in your company. So if I start off as a mover helper, well, step one is I could become really, before I jump ahead, you should have like two tiers. Maybe you've got a tier one mover or, or a B team and an A team, or maybe it's like, we could call it a junior mover helper, or you could have a senior mover helper, and then you could have a junior uh, crew leader and then a senior crew leader. So you should have a couple tiers. So that way that gives you the ability to promote people with job titles. Um, I've done this before. You can literally promote people, give them a new job title, not give them a raise, and they perform better. And it's because their job title is part of their ident identity. Um, now, I am a big promoter of like, you know, when somebody gets promoted with their title, it usually comes with a raise, but it doesn't always have to. Um, it could come with like a one-time bonus, right? It could come with multiple things. So your org chart, you wanna make sure that you have job titles and a roadmap built out. Like I've got two tiers of, of I've got a, a two-step tier of helpers, two-step tier of drivers, and then like, where do they go from there? Well, once they're a crew lead driver, maybe they could go into assistant operations manager, or they could go into a dispatcher, or maybe they go into on-site estimator or whatever it is, right? 
and you want to try to show as many opportunities as possible. When you sit down with people and and interview them, as well as when you onboard them, you should show them that. Because what it shows is it's a this is a company where I can grow. It's one of the top three reasons why people leave jobs is because they feel that there's not enough growth opportunity. So people are leaving, all right, you're turning people over because they don't feel recognized. There's not, they don't feel like there's enough opportunity. And then generally another big reason is because of the relationships, right? They feel that like, and this kind of goes back to the recognition part, but like they feel like management is playing favorites or something, or like they had a dispute with a coworker. So it's all environment. Yes, there are reasons that include, like compensation is a reason why people leave, hours are a reason, but you know, you, there's certain things you just can't control. You're, you might not be in a position to go from paying a mover $17 an hour to start paying them 25. It just might not be in your cards. And so you've got to think outside of the box of what are things that don't cost us capital that we can still get leverage. Okay, leverage is one of the most important words in your business. Okay, so turnover, you want to minimize turnover with getting people started properly, having a recognition system, like have certain things that you and your management recognize your staff for, you can, you can detail this out, okay? And then have like, how do we deliver the recognition? Meaning what mode? Are we doing a shout out in our team group chat? Are we doing something at the staff meeting? Um, are we doing a one-on-one -on -one meeting with that person? Uh, performance reviews, okay? If you guys aren't doing performance reviews, you ha you've got to do those, okay? The performance review is your opportunity to be able to have critical conversations and course correct, as well as reestablish those expectations and re-engineer you know, what you initially wanted in the beginning. Because what happens is people start off real well when you hire them and then they kind of steer away, right? They end up getting some bad habits, whether it's from them or whether it's just wearing off from the other people. So your performance reviews should be recalibrating your people as well as building relationships. And so you should be learning about your people. You'll learn their children's names, learn their spouse's names, understanding that like they, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And learning like, what are they working towards? Are they, are they trying to like get it, buy a house? Are they trying to get into a, a, an apartment? Are they trying to buy a car? Are they trying to do whatever? go back to school? Are they about to have a baby, right? And then and, and like they're about to be a new father or, or something. Help people with, with life things and they will be tied to the business more. And, and what it will allow is your retention, your retention will get better. I think moral of the story is, is get away from being so transactional. You have to be genuine. You have to build relationships. You have to invest in people. The way that you lower your turnover is by investing time resources into your people. There's no way around it. There's no quick fix. There's no software that's going to fix it. There's no uh, magic trick. Um, this is why most businesses do not succeed for a really long time. Anybody can be in business for one or two or three years. Show me a business that's been around for, you know, 20, 40, 50, 60 plus years. And it's a business that's figured out some of this stuff. So hope that helps. Hopefully it just gets your gears turning. Um, we'll see you guys on the next, uh, next week's video.